Your local chatwala bahiyaji can move over. Sev puri dough is wrapped onto metal cones, fried till crispy, and then they are stuffed with a chatpata potato filling with chutney and topped with crispy sev. Welcome back to Craving Food Adventures. I'm Karen Ahmed. I'm coming to you today with yet another very ingenious idea. This is basically safe puri but in a cone format. This elevates this safe puri to a whole other level. You can serve it as a party, as an appetizer, as an hors d'oeuvre, and everyone's going to love it. Before I go any further with this recipe, do be sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure to ring that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. Now, let's get started. Let's start with the puri dough. I'm starting with one cup of all-purpose flour or maida. I'm going to add half a cup of semolina or rubber. I'm also going to add two tablespoons of ghee, a quarter teaspoon of ajwain or karam seeds, and a quarter teaspoon of shah jeera. This is from the cumin family. If you can't find shah jeera, you can just use regular cumin. I'm also going to add one teaspoon of chili flakes. I use the chili flakes for a touch of heat, but more importantly, for the great flux of color in the dough. I'm going to rub the ghee into the flour so you get a short crust-like pastry. Add salt to taste. Take your time to work this in as it makes for a great crispy texture. I have some warm water here and I'm just going to add it in. I'm going to add about half a cup of warm water just a little bit at a time and I'm going to work it in. You may need a little bit more than half a cup. Because of the semolina, the dough will be tough. Just keep working it till it all comes together. You can also use a food processor for this. This is now ready. I'm going to cover it with cling film and I'm going to leave it aside for 30 minutes or so. In the meantime, I'm going to start on my filling. In boiling salted water with a pinch of turmeric, I'm going to add 2 cups of potatoes. I'm going to make half the filling that I need today as I will be storing half of the cones for another time. If you're going to use all of the cones, you can double the recipe of the filling. I've diced these potatoes into very small cubes so they're easy to stuff the cones. This should take about 5 to 7 minutes. After this, I will drain and cool the potatoes. The dough has now rested and it's time to roll it out. I have some extra flour here for dusting and I'm going to make sure that the dough does not stick to the surface. I'm going to cut the dough in half and bring my cookie cutter and cones. You can find these cones on Amazon. I will leave the link in the description. I'm going to roll out the dough till it's quite thin. Now look how great the dough looks with the flecks of the seeds and the specks of red from the chili flakes. Using my cookie cutter, I'm going to cut out the rounds. This is a large cookie cutter and it's 9 centimeters in diameter. I'm going to reserve the scraps as I can use them again later. The dough tends to shrink as it sits and I do want to get these a bit larger to fit my cones. So I'm just going to give this a gentle roll out again. I'm looking for a circle that's about 11 centimeters in diameter. Over the circle, I'm going to lay my cone down and simply wrap the dough on one side, dampen the other side with plain water to seal and turn it over. Now it's really important to press down on that seam. 
I'm also going to score it with a knife on the edge as well as all over the cone to prevent the dough from ballooning when it's fried. I'm going to repeat this process with all of the dough including the scraps. Once they're all done, it's ready to fry. The oil is nice and hot, so I'm going to insert the cones in and allow that dough to get nice and crispy. Sometimes the cone will just automatically separate from the dough. I love when that happens. Just remove the cone with metal tongs and drain out the excess oil. Once the cones get a nice color, take them out and drain them. I'm now going to finish frying the rest. To remove the cone, just twist it and separate. If you find that the cone is hard to separate because it's stuck on, do protect your hands with a piece of kitchen towel and add some pressure. The edges of the cones are thin and they can cut your fingers if you're not protected. I can tell you this from experience. I'm going to keep going. These will make about 20 cones in total. Whatever scraps are left, after I re-roll the dough for the second time, I'm just going to fry. These are my treat. The potatoes are now cool. I'm going to add a quarter teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of chaat masala, half a cup of finely diced onion, and half a cup of finely chopped coriander. I'm also going to add one tablespoon of tamarind sauce, one tablespoon of red chili sauce, and one tablespoon of green chutney. You can either use homemade sauces or store-bought. Mix this well together. Remember that this filling is good for about 10 of the cones. Using my mojito muddler or you can use a spoon, I'm just going to lightly mash about half the potatoes. We are now ready to assemble the cones. I'm going to grab a cone and add some save right at the bottom. Chaat is nothing without the condiments, so I'm going to add blobs of tamarind sauce red chili sauce and the green chutney in between. You can also use a spoon to add this. The squeeze bottles just make it easier. I'm going to add the potato filling, add more sauce on the top, and then cover the surface with more save. You can lay your cones down flat, or like me, you can use something with holes to serve them in. I'm just using my kulfi stand, it's perfect, but it's also very easy to make a DIY stand out of cardboard. I like to store my cones in a tin so they stay crisp and fresh. Once filled, they will stay crisp for about an hour, so it's a good idea to make these fresh as and when you need them. Enjoy!
thank you so much for joining me on Cravings Food Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this delicious recipe for safe puri cones. It's such a great, simple idea that has been elevated to a whole other level. If you love this recipe, do give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below and share it with your family and friends. And don't forget, make sure you're subscribed and that you've rung the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. And be sure to follow me behind the scenes on all of my social channels. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Until I see you next time, do take care. Bye.